views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stainus. Welcome to Voices of Women. Um, hey, I want to announce that today we are launching the Give Big in Seattle. It actually happens May 10th, but you can set up your donations. It's a day that everybody in the region donates to all their favorite nonprofits in the region. So I hope you consider giving to Women Wisdom to continue our dream of supporting women on their path to empowerment and embracing their gifts and the divine feminine within. And we're excited this year we have a matching donation of $3,000. So your dollars will be doubled. And you can just go to givebigseattle.org and then search for Woman of Wisdom and set up a donation um, that will happen on May 10th. So we appreciate that. Well, I'm excited today to have a guest um, from St. Petersburg, Florida, Temple Hayes. She's a spiritual leader at the Unity Campus and is an international recognized leader. She also serves on the Leadership Council of the Association of Global New Thought. And she has a popular radio show, too, The Intentional Spirit. And Temple Hayes is the founder of Life Rights. That's a nonprofit dedicated to the right of all to live the life of their intention in freedom and peace. And the Sophie Project, which is a nonprofit organization that rescues and rehabilitates dogs and cats globally, headquartered in Tampa Bay, Florida. Temple is the author of How to Speak Unity, The Right to Be You, and When Did You Die? Eight Steps to Stop Dying Every Day and to Start Waking Up. So we're going to be talking about When did you die today? So welcome, Temple. Oh, Chris, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, well, um, first tell us your story, how you moved out of a life of alcohol, car wrecks, even been in jail, to being a unity spiritual leader. Now, that's quite a journey. (laughs) It definitely is quite a journey. Well, growing up, um, like we say about so many people who hasn't been part of some kind of dysfunctional family, but I was born in a small southern town, um, big hearts but small minds. The only accepted uh, religion by anybody that I knew was uh, Baptist. And everything within that message was not really in harmony. I was spiritual, but what I heard about that God was not a God that would be for me. Um, and it, so it was very disturbing, and I felt awkward and rejected and odd and you name it. And so I started rejecting myself, and actually, alcohol is, you know, what gave me a little bit of um, just relief, if you will. I mean, I started out just kind of numbing myself. But uh, in 1989, I had like a middle of the night awakening, and it was profound because I had been drinking then actively for like 15 years. I'd been in all these car accidents. I'd been to jail twice, and I I heard this voice. Um, this loud kind of message that said, if you want to live, don't ever drink again. And I'm fortunate that that happened. I've never known what the voice is. It can be whatever anybody wants it to be. But it was very clear with me that that was not a direction I was to go again. And I, I never went down all 13 again in the, uh, in the alcohol uh, line. And um, I'll be sober this year 30 years. Amazing. Yeah, that's great. So is that your aha moment in your life when you stop dying or is there another important aha? Well, there's, I think that, you know, now where we are in our evolution, we, we have these aha moments like all the time. And uh, just a, a huge one for me is that 
because I've been around a lot of death in my life. I had all my grandparents, my great parents, my grandparents, so many people I've said goodbye to. And one of the things I know for sure is that so many people are obsessed, are immensely afraid of, or in denial that any of us are ever going to die. I mean, we still call it unexpected. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. because because we have this avoidance of we don't want to do it, we hope somebody creates a pill so we don't have to do it, we're kind of forgetting about, in my opinion, the essence of it is the way it is. As we know it, we are going to do that. We are going to die, but we don't have to die while we're living. And that's where I set on this you know, endless series of aha moments about how people energetically are dying every day. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a physical death, but uh, dying every day, being in a relationship that someone dreads going home to, being in a job where somebody might be well compensated but are tremendously unhappy, Um, being in a habit like me, you know, drinking and apologizing for myself every day. I mean, I was dying because I I don't believe we're here on this planet to apologize for ourselves every day, uh, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And and we see it all around us. People, I mean, you can just walk into a store or walk down the street and see people that have that energy. You can read that energy that they're not living their life. They're not happy. Absolutely, and it's not um, it's not people that are in their eighties. I mean, we're, we're talking people that you know that are often teenagers mm-hmm. that are that are in their early twenties and they've already created such a, a paradigm of a frame of reference for themselves that well, this is how it's going to be, um, the dread of life. And at once one gets into working with life that way, I mean, life brings them back, you know, the same kind of thing. I, I think one of the biggest ahas I've had is is my life is only, only going to be as exciting as I am as excited about my life. And That's I've so true, seen yeah. that time and time again. And, that, and I know you do working mm-hmm. with so many people and with your radio show and, and you have so, certain guests and you're like, can you, can you give me something to work with? <laughs> you know, it's just, it's interesting that part of it that people don't understand, you get what you bring. If you, if you bring anger and, um, and discernment and fear of getting close to people, those are the kind of people you, you hang out with. If you bring half your love bucket rather than a full cup, that's what you get. Um, it, we didn't make these laws up. We just have to learn how to work with them. Yes, and, it, and you, um, that um, brings to mind that, you know, it's a choice. We make those choices daily. And, and you're talking about taking responsibility. That, you know, this is your life. You make the choice to be happy, to, <clears throat> to, you know, to bring the life fully on and to live with that passion and all that that you're talking about. Um, so also I know you, there was a defining moment in that you talked about in the book as my way or the highway. And that's mm-hmm. how you came to write this amazing book. Oh, well, and thank you. And thank you for calling it amazing. I appreciate that. Um, well, I learned early on, especially being a woman in a very small town where women didn't really have any opportunities for any roles, and being more metaphysical and spiritual instead of religiosity, and uh, being a, more comfortable uh, with women rather than men, which you know has changed many times in my life. I mean, most of most men in my life are like my dearest and best friends, but at the time it was a very confusing time in my teenage years. Um, My grandmother told me she was sad she wasn't going to spend heaven with me. And I'm thinking, I don't even have my driver's license yet, you know. (laughs) But but what I was doing back then, Chris, is I was pushing. I was so determined. I was an all-American athlete. I was so determined to make things happen. Just push, 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 make them happen, make them happen, overachieving, et cetera. Until I realized that, yeah, you can definitely, you can make things happen. More often than not, the things we push into happening, ultimately, we always wish we had not. So I learned how to get into the practice of allowing things to come to me to take a higher road of not pushing uh, and being more open and paying attention to the signs around me, the phone calls, the connections, the introductions, those kind of things. It. It's made. It's paying attention to what literally knocks on my door three times. It's been 
such a great change and way to live in my life. Mm-hmm. And you had that knock about writing the book because you were, you write about it, you you resisted it, you know, which I oh, understand. Yeah. It's kind of like we all. I don't have a story to tell. <laughs> you know, who's going to read mm-hmm. my book? All those mind games we play with Absolutely. ourselves. Absolutely, all those and, mind games we play. Yeah. It's like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so then finally, you know, after three knocks, you listened. Actually, somebody to set you up with a publisher, I think, or something like that. So it was mm-hmm. like, what choice did you have? You, you, that path was laid out for you. I literally was meeting with a woman that's been kind of um, re- wanting me to be further out there and have a larger platform, you know, and, and she said so many things. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I was literally meeting with her that day to tell her, you know what? I am not writing a book. I appreciate it. I'm going to do other things. I'm going to do video, blah, blah, blah. No, thank you. And uh, she walked up to me and said, I've already contacted a publisher, and she'll be writing you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank okay, you. <laughs> Start writing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Well, um, yeah, so we're going to be talking more about what is in this book. Um, Temple has lots of tools and practices and that are uh, that are helpful for people for, you know, finding out how they can get out of this dying their life into living their life. So stay tuned. We'll come back and we'll talk more with Temple Hayes. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLuce.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Miss any shows during the week? Don't worry, we've got you covered. With the free Transformation Talk radio app, you'll have access to all of the past week's shows in the palm of your hand. Tune in to Transformation Talk Radio anywhere you go with our free app for any of your devices. Check out our app in the App Store and Google Play Store today. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio. Featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net for show days and times. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. When your body is awakened, your spirit comes alive. Dana Canetto is a transformational guide, embodiment coach, and spiritual mentor assisting women in realigning with their truth and embodying who they are by connecting to the wisdom of their body. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio and the Dr. Pat Show Network for Body Divinity Radio with Dana Canetto. For more information on Dana and her services, visit danacanetto.com. That's D-A-N-A-C-A-N-N-E-T-O.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. We're back on Voices of Women, 
and I'm talking with Temple Hayes about her book, When Did You Die? And we're going to learn about these steps, eight steps to stop dying every day and start waking up. So one of the things that I, I liked about your book was um, in the very beginning, you talk about you created symbols for yourself. And one of the things was you created a sacred warrior shield. Tell us about that. Well, a part of my journey, I, I, I felt that when I, when I looked at certain situations that had really zapped me or, or, or taken my energy in my life was that I had like a sense of danger. danger. And, and I felt I had that, you know, when I was a little girl, like if I would get something on my hands outside, I would be afraid it was poison. And there was no rhyme or reason that I was that way. I mean, I would, I'm just, I would be now what we would call an indigo, a highly sensitive child. I could watch something on television. Do you remember Mod Squad? Am I just dating myself? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you for that. Anyway, so it was a television show that showed all these medical conditions, and I would wind up, by the end of the show, I would tell my mom I had all the symptoms because I was just that sensitive, and still am, but more keenly aware of how to use it. But, and so it was just like this sense of danger. And so when I was working in my practices in uh, Celtic shamanism, it was um, I did a meditation and I asked for a symbol that would help me overcome that energetic reaction that I would have to things. You know, like somebody calls you on the phone, oh, i got something to tell you. And your first qu thing is, what's wrong? Instead of, oh, I'm so happy to hear from you. Tell me, you know, your good news. And it was just something that was there. It was like an under, you know, a subconscious driver, one would say. So I, I saw this image of this shield. And, and so every time that I would have that sense of danger, I would, in my mind, I would hold up that shield like nothing or no one is against me. And I would just hold it up, you know, a few seconds. And, um, and what was overwhelming at first is I realized then how much I was doing that. Um, but after time and after practicing it, it went away. And I've taught that to many people through the years. It's uh, just an image or a sign or something. It could be the image of a butterfly in your mind. It could be a gray elephant. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a symbol that resonates with you. But when you have that, I, I don't deserve it or I'm not okay or I'm afraid, um, you can do that instead. Because what happens when we have these thoughts in our mind like, oh, I'm being negative, and, you know, I shouldn't be negative, and I don't want to be negative. It's like you just keep feeding, you know, right? And it just keeps building and bigger and bigger. But when you use symbology, you don't get into that mentalizing of it, and it's easier to disperse that and break that habit. And that's what it was for me. It was a long-term habit, and it has left. Thank mm -hmm. <laughs> and and we don't always realize when um, how we are impacted by other people's negativity and we, how we take it on because we're like sponges. So um, I would imagine that be, because you created that sacred warrior shield, you became more aware of energies that would be coming towards you, too. That you oh, totally. instantly Absolutely. you know put it up and and um, and then make choices in your life like you know this is a person I don't want to be around or a situation or a job or whatever whatever it is. Well, you created another symbol to help you stay grounded and centered, and I, I found that one intriguing. Tell us about that. Are you talking about the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. Well, that was yeah, that was really interesting. I was on a I was on a weekend retreat, and um, and so I was to go. I was working with a teacher, and I was to go into this meditative place, and I was to. Um, you know, ask for the symbol that would best support me to stay grounded. And there was the Eiffel Tower. And I, I felt almost like apologetic when I first came back after the meditation. And she said, well, you know, what did you see? Draw what you saw. And I said, and I love Paris, you know. And I had been there a couple of times. And I said, well, it's kind of weird. <laughs> She's like, well, what do you mean? And I went, it's the Eiffel Tower. Well, lo and behold, that very weekend, there was an article in the parade, uh, an insert into our newspaper, and it said, all the psychics are gathering from around the world to be at the Eiffel Tower because that's where the signal is the strongest. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so then when I looked at it from a metaphorical point of view, then I could see that each 
leg, the Eiffel Tower has four legs, is that it represented being balanced emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Now, of course, we're off sometimes in one of those areas at any given moment. But I realized that when I was mostly balanced in all those areas of my life, you know, eating better, not being aware of what was eating me, you know, those kind of things, dealing with my emotions, et cetera, that I was more open, I was more intuitive, I, I could have more awareness of other people and things around me and be more creative. And, um, and then, of course, uh, Chris, you know, for me, um, feeling, growing up feeling so different, um, for sure, I, um, I love the fact that, you know, they laughed at the Eiffel Tower. It, it was built to just be there for a temporary thing. And uh, they made fun of it. Uh, the Parisians and didn't really want it, and now it's their it's their icon for you know the city, of course. But I I know I know that essence of feeling original and feeling awkward or feeling threatening, you know, to those around you, because that's how I felt, especially mm-hmm. in my teenage years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that points out how when we you know go to a meditative state, how a symbol will come forward that's very unique to you. You know, that resonated with um, you know who you are and. I know sometimes because I was looking at this like, oh, what would be, you know, like you want to, oh, what's my unique symbol? And you, you have to really kind of be, go inward and meditate and let it come to you versus, again, that pushing for, I got to have a symbol. Absolutely. It's, it's, it has to make sense to you uh, uh, to work. And I think that's one of the parts of, you know, self-help is, you know, often people are rushing around looking for a one size fits all. And, we're we're all very uniquely different. We're we're drawn to different teachers. We're drawn to different um, videos, uh, things we see on Facebook. We're, uh, you know, we're we're all different. I like to say that for me, I am basically who I was at five years old. I'm just comfortable being that now. I don't apologize for myself, and I've learned how to be okay with who I am. Um, And I think that's probably true for most people. It's like Meister Eckhart would say that real spirituality, meaning the spirit of living your own life, uh, that you were created to be who you are in your own uniqueness, is subtracting what you've accumulated in your life that doesn't belong to you, that's not really you. I mean, so many people set off on the course of of being trained early on. The teacher told me I can't do this. Uh, My parents said I'll never amount to this. The doctor said, oh, you, you won't ever be able to do that. And they're starting life with all the, I can't, I won't, this won't happen, um, those kind of things. And it, it becomes ingrained in people's practices in their lives rather than looking at, no, I'm, I'm here for a certain reason. I mean, I'm, I've always loved pets. I've always loved animals. I've always rescued the bug and saved the insect and all that. And, yeah, I've took a lot of hits through the years of people laughing and, everything else and let them laugh. That's me. That's who I am. You know, right. now I'm comfortable with people going, Oh my God, you're ridiculous. And I go, I know. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what you were talking about is uh, that you talk about in the book about, um, we become robotic in nature, you know, and do what mm-hmm. people expect of us and all that. So that's a great example of that. Well, I want to get into, um, how you you have a section of the book about creating your inner God personalized system, which is your GPS. So let's um, talk about that. Well, that's ability to, you know, really listen. And I I give them a simplistic example of when you jump in the car with a group of people and you put into the navigation system, this is where we want to arrive on this particular street in Brooklyn, New York. And I don't know about you, I've actually been in the car with people that they start arguing with the system. You know, they'll go, oh, this doesn't feel right. Oh, I don't think we should turn left. And I always say, have you been there before? No, I've never been there. And I go, well, don't you think we ought to trust the satellite system, you know, because you can't hold something accountable if you're not listening and doing what it's telling us to do. And um, that's the way people are often living life is is they say that I want to be happily married and, you know, I want to have two children and I want to be a teacher, you know, in, in Wyoming or whatever. And and so they've put that into their system. They put that into their GPS, that God personalized system, and events and encounters and development, kind and unkind, 
directions happen in their life to push them towards what they say they wanted. But often people don't listen. They're not paying attention. They're pushing, you know, like I used to do, and making things happen, and they're not happy. When all along, if they would listen and follow, follow the path, follow the guidance, uh, more often than not, they wind up where they originally wanted to be. Yes, there's that, the well, that inner voice or those, those intu- intuitive moments where you allow those, um, well, you get significators or you, or you get messages, you know, it might be you're meditating or you're kind of wanting something and you put it out there, but you don't, like you say, you don't push at it. You'll see messages on the path. It might be a billboard, it might be something here on the radio and one step leads you to another step. And so you, you, like you say, you, you get there without that forcing it, without that, which usually we get hit by a two by four on our head when we do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, um, well, we're going to take a break now. Um, we're going to come back and talk more with Temple Hayes. Do you feel that there's a bigger, better life for you? Is there anything holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? If you'd like to find your life's true purpose and calling, join the world's foremost authority on primal spirituality. David Carr share in Becoming a Sun Radio, emotional and spiritual intelligence for a happy, fulfilling life. Tune in once a month to Becoming a Sun Radio with David Carr share on the Dr. Pat Show and Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit davidcarshare.com today. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundation-less. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. Sorry, we had a little technical problems there. And we're back with Temple Hayes, author of When Did You Die? Eight Steps to Stop Dying Every Day and Start Waking Up. Uh, Temple, please share your website and, um, you know, if there's things you have to offer people there. You bet. It's templehayes.com. That's H-A-Y-E-S, templehayes.com. Um, I 
I share about uh, my work with global peace workers. I share about life rights and, yeah, a wide range of things, uh, things that are up and coming. I'm featured in June uh, on the cover of the Signs of Mind magazine, and I'm thrilled about that. Um, I love that magazine. Um, I'm sure you read it from time to time, right, Chris? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd love to stay in touch, and I... um, my book is on there too, so you can purchase the book that we're talking about today from there. Okay, yeah. Like I said, there's lots of tools in there, and you've done a lot of shamanic practices and spiritual traditions that you have in the book and pass that on to people. So let's talk a little bit about mystical experiences, you know, and maybe some examples where that's uh, where you've had a mystical experience that played a role for you that helped you be energized and impassioned versus drained and disconnected. Well, you know, some of the greatest things that I've uh, witnessed in my life are are related to um, energy and being an energy healer. Um, One of the examples I give in the book is that I was at this retreat and someone had heard that I was there and knew that I do some work in helping people uh, or helping animals, you know, transform their energies. Either they've been traumatized or, you know, gone through tragedy or whatever. And so um, they asked if I would look at uh, a two-year horse uh, that they had, and they couldn't do anything with it. It wouldn't move forward. It resisted. Um, It was a beautiful horse, but it just, they couldn't get it to really do anything. And they had had training and blah, blah. So anyway, I just said, well, you know, I've, I didn't say I've never done that before, (laughs) which is kind of a key to life. Just don't say that. I've never done that before. Just know if you're being asked, you know, there's a reason. And so I said, sure, I'd be glad to. So I said, the only thing I request is that I go in the stable with the horse by myself. And so I went in and I just started talking to the horse and I said, I'm sorry, no one's understood you. And whatever's happened to you, you know, we apologize. And lo and behold, the horse, Tears are coming down the horse's eyes, and I'm rubbing its back and everything. And I could kind of see this image of how this horse was born, real tragic birth. I just closed my eyes, and I just said, you know, let me see what's happened. And it was just horrible, the the pain that this horse had endured. And, um, And also I could see where this horse had been beaten. And then when I looked on its face, I could see the scars from that. And because whoever had it, you know, early on, that was their reaction to it, not doing, you know, what they wanted it to do. So it it was an amazing moment for me in in that awareness of of also how the horse moved forward and changed after that because um, of the energy that lined up with, with her. And and I think that that it, you know happens with people too that when your stories are witnessed there's a healing you know you witnessed his you know the the horse's story its pain and trauma that it went through. Mhm. Oh, absolutely. I I was telling a story the other day of how we had a we had a healer here at uh, First Unity Spiritual Campus, and he he does a lot of energy work. And there was this child here that I knew had been. Um, severely uh, smacked around by his, his dad, and his, do- his dad had kind of lost his station rights and stuff of that nature and had almost broken his bone and not good stuff for a child under two. And I asked the healer if he would just sit with that little boy. It was fascinating, Chris, how that little boy just was wailing, getting that out of his body, getting rid of it, and... Uh, his life forever changed, you know, and that's the part where you made a reference early on about, you know, that we're not robotic. We're not. We have feelings. We're created to have feelings. It's not the owning of the feelings that causes us problems. It's the disowning of the feelings that causes problems and medicating them away or drinking them away, you know, um, because, we're denying ourselves of, you know, what's real. And once they're faced, they're, they're not near as large or huge as, as they are because we stuff them. True, yeah. Yeah, and once they get out, you know, because we have a lot of shame with sharing with our stories and our wounds and, 
And once you allow yourself to, you know, and have someone safe to, you know, safe container to share that, it's a relief to uh, let go of that shame. In my early days of alcoholism, you know, it's just in my early 30s, and I have just always shared, uh, you know, that about my life because I, I felt like if if my story could help one person, you know, if, if one person could resonate with, you know, what I was saying or what I was doing, I felt like I earned the story, and I, I didn't want to have a in-the-closet story because it can help people. Uh, it's kind of wonderful to see you know, various talk shows and just like yours and different things and, you know, my show where we're always educating people to, you know, what is and to get more information to make healthier decisions about their lives and their children. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're we're talking about, you know, the wounds and and, um, and how to to use energy to move through those wounds um, to really be in touch with our spirit and what our spirit is calling for us in this life. And there's a lot of people that sort of, we cling to our wounds. You, know, you have a story oh, yeah. in the book of carrying, the, carrying, carrying the bag mm-hmm. of rags around. We carry our bag of rags. We, even if we have something new, we still carry the old stuff with us. We do. And we, we start dating someone new and we spend, you know, six hours telling them about our exes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and how we don't want them to be like that, you know. I don't. I don't know why we do that. It doesn't. It doesn't make um, a whole lot of sense. Um, we do. We carry these wounds from place to place and project them onto others, instead of, um, you know, stopping and doing the inner work where we can eliminate that altogether, or we can voice it and recognize it and then dissipate it um, back to where it no longer belongs. I mean, so many people just repeat the same patterns their parents had. You know, mm-hmm. and carrying that out, and that's that's always a big aha when somebody can go, oh my gosh, you know, the very person I said I never wanted to be like, my dad. Wow. Well, guess what? You know, yeah, I become yeah. that person, right? <laughs> I become yeah. that person or that mom or whatever. Yeah, and sometimes you don't realize it till you're you're later in life, and you because you've 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 made sure I'm not going to be like my mom for many many years, and when you start to recognize it, recognize that it's, 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 it's interesting. I, I did that myself too. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, talk about an aha moment, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oops, well, guess what? And there's gifts with that too. I mean, it isn't like sometimes mm-hmm. we put, we, we put the negativity on that, you know, like, I don't want to be like my mom and it's such a negative thing. In reality, if we turn that around, there's gifts there. You bet. You bet. And I, you know, I, I think about that when I, when I think about wounded, you know, often people think broken, uh, disjointed, um, you know, disconnected and yeah, that, that's one piece of it. And absolutely there, there's a good bit of that out there, but there's also, you know, people that need to be healed with just the ability to accept the greatness, um, to be able to rise in their own self-esteem, uh, to be able to uh, step up and be able to accept uh, their destiny of what they are to accomplish in their lives. Uh, there's people that are afraid to accept their own uh, assertiveness, you know, especially with uh, a lot of women because they have been taught, you know, you're too bold, you're you're too outspoken, you're too direct, you're you're too cranky, you're too demanding, you're too, 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 you know. And so often a healing is to recognize that that has uh, kept a person often from stepping up to that role or, or being a leader or, or being a change maker because then they become shy. Yeah, and embarrassed to, or, or don't feel worthy to bring those gifts out as, as a leader. Um, mm-hmm. That whole deserving thing that a lot of women do that. Well, Well, we're going to take a break now. Um, We're going to come back and talk more with Temple Hayes. To 
Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadhyay and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog, Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to effect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. We're back on Voices of Women, and I'm talking with Temple Hayes about her book, When Did You Die? So that brings me to, because in your book, you talk about, you have a term, your dreams are waiting on you to come true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love that, that, that statement, because um, I, I think because of, of just the life I long for, um, I would always feel like, well, I'll be happier when. I, I don't think I'm unique. I think a lot of people have lived in that. And because in my early life, I was living like something was always missing. And I would get that one thing. You know, when that other thing would happen, then I would be better. I would be okay or I'd be validated or maybe, goodness, I'd even, you know, be able to call myself a little bit of, in, you know, important. And so it was always pursue, pursuing the dream something way over there that I was longing for. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. I mean, it, it's goal-oriented. We, we strive for being more. We're destined that way in nature. But when it's always a put-off, of it's over there, uh, for me, switching it around, my dreams are waiting on me to come true, brought it back to a, a deeper inner responsibility for myself. What is it within me that I need to do to ready me for the dream so when it comes, I can hold on to it. You know, a Mm -hmm. a bizarre way of looking at that is the people that win the lottery and a year later they check in with them and they're broke. Do you know what I mean? So the consciousness was not intact in place. The deservingness or whatever it was that would allow that 
uh, to hold. And so that's that place I started working from is visualizing, you know, holding that space. What's it going to be like, you know, when I'm offered this opportunity of my own TV show? Or what would that be? And what do I need to do in order that I'm comfortable with that? And it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, because you become more of an active participant instead of just, uh, you know, waiting on the magic to fall from the sky. You're actually kind of building the base. So when it does happen, more importantly, you see it. You know, it doesn't just go right over our heads, but we recognize it and we're ready. True. Well, that that leads me to another question because, you know, when people have dreams of, you know, finding true love and, and you have a journey of that, too, of how you discovered um, your true love. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And the true love that everyone's desiring, you know, at the end of the day, it's about do I treat myself that way? I am, am I this way to myself? You know, do I sit down and treat myself to a wonderful dinner or do I hover over the sink and, you know, just eat a can of tuna with some broccoli? Do I treat myself in a way that I want someone because the, the shining, uh, not on shining armor or the, uh, the magic woman for someone to show in, up in someone's life can only treat us in a way that we're comfortable. So then we get back to that, you know, am I, do I love myself enough and not criticize myself that much? Have I made progress in that way? So when somebody shows up in my life, that's complimentary, that's honoring that's more a place of admiration, can I accept that? Can I accept within myself that, yes, I deserve that because that's how I treat myself. That's what I had to learn is that I wasn't going to have any relationship in my life that was better if I wasn't treating myself better. That's an important lesson. Um Yeah, I mean, it's the thing of the external reflects back what's going on inside you. Mm -hmm. And so what's Mm -hmm. going on inside you, you know, if you're loving yourself, you're going to find people that love you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Well, I used to see people years ago and talk to them because I've been in the, you know, I've been a public person really all my life. And I remember this woman telling me, oh, you know, I just love my husband so much. And, you know, we hardly ever travel apart. And I was thinking, I got to say, I was thinking codependency. (laughs) Because I couldn't relate. I mean, that just felt like goo to me. I'm like, what? You like somebody that much? I I love sometimes just getting a break or a big old time out. But I do understand it now because I I have someone in my life that I, I, no matter what, I can sit and watch her across the room and I go, there's so much about her I don't even know yet, you know? And wow. And it's not a have to, but it's a, a look forward to. And those kind of things. And certainly with our lives, we're not able to, you know, travel uh, together everywhere we go. It's just not possible. But I understand that feeling now. And that's what people need to recognize is that if you're not really ready to accept that much love inside yourself, when someone does come into your life, you won't, you won't think they're truthful. You'll go, there's something about that person. They're just not real. They're being so nice and so kind to me, and something must be wrong with them. <laughs> well, there's that element of tr- trust. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, it, it is. It relates to trust, of trusting someone could love you. Well, mm-hmm. do you trust yourself? Right, exactly. That's what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, um, briefly, I would love um, – I, I, this stuck with me. You, you talked about having four bones that we need in our life. And I, I love the analogies mm-hmm. here. There was a the backbone, wishbone, funny bone, and hollow bone. Yes. It's kind of the everyday lesson of life. We, our backbone is that we need our courage every day to take a stand for who we are and what we believe. Our, our funny bone is, you know, we're going to laugh at ourselves. Marie Osmond said this. You're going to laugh at yourself eventually, laugh at yourself now. We all make mistakes, but we're not a mistake. And learning to lighten up and laugh and and have a lot of joy. I think they say children laugh, uh, I don't know, the recent studies like two or 3,000 times a day, and adults laugh, what, 18 times a day or something. I mean, it's just really a low number. But to, to be in that, that joy, that hollow bone is to leave room in our calendars 
to leave room in our life for, on an occasion, some unexpected thing to happen, for something to to, to take place or, or to uh, occur. Um, because if a schedule is always full and our mantras were busy, we're not allowing room for the new to come in, or when something's ending, um, it's important to, to wait for the new to come so that we just don't repeat the same thing we just had and more up, you know? Um, I've seen that happen with people in jobs. I've seen it happen with people in relationships. They get out of one and they go jump in another, and they haven't changed a pattern so they don't get, you know, different results. Right. And then, of course, the wishbone is those wishes, those things we look forward to, those things that ever since we were kids and we could see the big stars in the sky and have hope and have, have dreams and have knowing. It's it's really what guides our path. It's what keeps our soul open. And what it offers us an opportunity to change many times. I, I feel like I'm on, like, my ninth life now <laughs> and and I think that's important for people to realize is that we're there's another part of dying every day that means let go of things that no longer work for you because you really can you can go into new chapters of your life and create things uh you know that are magical and wonderful beyond your imagination really mm-hmm. well that and then, we don't have time for the story but I um I'd love to know the story of how you started rescuing dogs from Brazil when you visited mm-hmm. John of God um mm-hmm. That you know here, uh, you saw all these dogs that, that you know, which we often see in some in uh, different countries like that. That are just they're not taken care of. They're pretty mangy, and and um, that have impacted you because you love animals. And here, this dog came crying and ran ran into your arms, which got you. That's how you got started on creating that nonprofit to rescue dogs and cats, and um, and so that's showing. And I just want to share that because that's showing you living with an in, in intention and integrity of who you are, and you acted mm. on something that mm. was important to you. And a lot of times we don't know what to do and we don't do anything. So yeah. just want Thank to commend you <laughs> commend you for that. So do you have any Thank last you. one sentence, last words of wisdom for people to take away? It's back to what you and I were saying earlier in the show. You get what you bring. If you want something in your life to be different, bring different. Bring different to the table, and that's the way your life will be. Mm -hmm. And that's also, uh, to me, that relates to um, you have to give in order to receive. You can't just expect the receiving end of it. Well, great. Thank you so much, Temple, for being on the show today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you. And um, check out our website, Temple Hayes, H A W E. H A W H A Y E S dot com <laughs> and and you know look for a book. I encourage you to read it and um, just um, yeah. So I also want to remind people that I have the Woman of Wisdom book on Kindle now. That's new and so everything's in color. This great art and it's the stories and art poetry of women who've attended the conference for many years. The book's Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women, and it's a it's an exploration of the divine feminine. So I encourage you to check out the Kindle book. Of course, you know where to get that at Amazon. And remember to um, give Big Day in Seattle, May 10th. Um, you can go on now and and set up your uh, uh, donation. Any any amount is very welcome. It will be doubled because we have a matching donor. Um, you know, support the empowerment women, no no matter where you are. Um, it has this ripple effect. So what we do in Seattle, we know impacts every woman everywhere. So you just go to givebigseattle.org and search for Woman of Wisdom. Well, I hope everybody has a great weekend. We're having a sunny day here in Seattle, and uh, it's you know take advantage of it because it's supposed to come back and be rainy, which we've had a lot of rain lately. So enjoy today, enjoy your weekend, and we'll be actually I want to announce I'm going to be back next week. I'll be interviewing Neil Donald Walsh with his new book, Conversations of God, Book Four, Awaken the Species. Very excited about that. Okay, thanks for being with us today. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.